Hey everybody! You may have already set up Home Assistant, and if not, I got two recent videos to help. One, if you want to set it up on a Raspberry Pi, and the other, if you want to set up Home Assistant in a virtual environment using Proxmox. This one, it's a great option. It allows you to set up other services on the same computer. Now, one of the great things about Home Assistant is that it runs locally. It doesn't rely on any cloud services, and it can be secured within your home network. This is one of the most applauded features of Home Assistant, and this means that even without an internet connection, your automation should continue to work. But one of the great things about smart home automation is being able to access your devices remotely. So today, I'm going to look at three ways, maybe four, that you can access Home Assistant from anywhere in the world. Now, each one has its pros and cons, and you can even mix and match a little bit. But let's take a look at each option, and I'll let you decide which one's the best for you. First up, it's VPN. Now, you've probably all heard this term before, but might not fully understand what it means. So let me take a step back and try to explain. When you set up a home network, everything that you have is running inside your house. This would be the safest method, but then we all go ahead and connect to the internet. Now, even with the most basic internet provider nowadays, they give you a router with a built-in firewall. At its most basic, that firewall is there to stop anything from coming into your house and accessing your devices, while it should allow for your devices to reach out to the internet and pull information back. Now, it's a little simplified, but it works for this example. Think of a VPN like a virtual cable or a tunnel. It's connected directly from the device that you're using remotely, say your iPhone or your computer, and it connects to your firewall. Once it's connected, it acts as if you had just plugged that device directly into your home. So now you have access to the devices in your home like you were there. Now this virtual cable or tunnel, it doesn't allow anything else into your home. So your connection is secure between your remote device and your home network. Now this is the first and the safest method to connect remotely. Using a VPN, you can connect and then open the Home Assistant companion app on your phone or on a web browser and you can control Home Assistant. But remember, this only works while you're connected. Now, although it's fairly easy to use, it can be a bit of a hassle to set up. Some internet routers have built-in VPN servers or you could use a Raspberry Pi or a virtual environment like Proxmox to run an open source VPN server. I personally use Unify devices, which have a very easy to set up VPN option. If you're going this route, I would suggest looking at the Unify Dream Machines, as I think they're the perfect device for any home network setup. One final consideration is that you may have to set up a dynamic DNS service to help track your home IP address. Many internet providers change this from time to time. And if you don't have the up-to-date address, you're not gonna be able to connect remotely. Some routers, like the Unify, have a built-in capability to do this. Or you can use a service like Duck DNS and Home Assistant to help update the IP automatically as it changes. Now on top of Home Assistant, a VPN can provide other benefits as you would now have access to any of the devices in your home for remote connectivity. Now if this one is feeling a little bit too much for you, the next option is to simply expose your Home Assistant server to the internet. Essentially what we're gonna do is tell your firewall that it can allow connections to just your Home Assistant server on just the Home Assistant port, 8123, but it should continue to block all other connections into your network. It's like we're punching one single hole through that firewall. Now, it can be just this basic, but I would suggest that you also move your Home Assistant into what's called a DMZ zone, or the demilitarized zone. Essentially, this is like having a firewall between the internet and Home Assistant, and then another firewall between your Home Assistant and the other devices in your home. This way, only your Home Assistant server is ever exposed to any risk. But this can start to get complicated as your Home Assistant server may need access to other network devices. So these are gonna have to go into a different segment or be moved into the DMZ along with Home Assistant. Now, this may all sound a little unsecure at first, but with an encryption certificate from a service like Let's Encrypt, we can make sure that all the communications between the remote device, that's your phone or your computer, and Home Assistant is encrypted to stop people from listening, stealing passwords, or trying to control your server. So this is actually very similar to how you would connect to a bank using a secure connection with a browser. Now this method would also likely require the use of a dynamic DNS service to track your external IP, and it's gonna require you to update the digital certificate from time to time. Thankfully again, there's plugins in Home Assistant that are gonna help you do this. The biggest issue with this method is that your Home Assistant server's login screen, it's now open to the internet. Much like the login screen on your bank, 
So if you're going to want to make sure that you pick a strong username and password to access Home Assistant. If somebody's able to guess your login, they're going to have full access to Home Assistant. Finally, we need to keep in mind that if there is ever a flaw in the login or the web part of Home Assistant, it's possible that a hacker could exploit this and gain access to Home Assistant. Again, this is true with your bank or pretty much any other SaaS software out there. Okay, now relax. If all these have you a little concerned, rest assured there is an easy option. And by easy, I mean really easy. Nabu Casa. This is the commercial arm of Home Assistant. It's a company created to provide cloud services such as, well, you guessed it, remote access to Home Assistant. Now this option is built into Home Assistant. All you need to do is sign up for an account, pay a small monthly fee, sign back in from your Home Assistant at home, and then that's it. Now you can access it anywhere remotely. The service also allows you to make use of voice assistance from Google and Amazon to control your home. Now the only real flaw to this one is of course the monthly fee, but I personally feel better knowing that the aim of the company is to support and improve Home Assistant, and I think as long as this continues to be the case, it's a win-win for everybody. Okay, bonus time. There is actually a fourth option. I'm going to share it, but it's probably the most intense to set up. You could use a free option from a company called Cloudfare to create a secure tunnel to your home assistant setup. You're going to need a domain name. You're going to need an account with Cloudflare and you're going to have to install a plugin to Home Assistant. The service, it's currently free. Essentially, your Home Assistant web portal will still be open to the internet, but Cloudflare acts like a web firewall, filtering out malicious attacks before they even get a chance to get to Home Assistant. The biggest benefit, you don't need to open any ports on your firewall. Now, I don't know for sure, but I believe this is very similar setup to what Nabu Casa is already doing. Now, it's a good option if you really don't want to spend any money, but knowing I can get the same level of security for a small fee and it goes to support Home Assistant, well, that makes Nabu Casa my favorite option. Also, it's completely possible that as this becomes more popular, Cloudflare is going to just start charging a fee and you're going to end up back in the same place. Now, this video was meant more as an overview to show you the options out there. I'm going to share all the links in the description as well as on my website if you want to look into these deeper. But because I know you're going to ask, I'm currently using two of these methods. I have a VPN connection set up that allows me access not only to my home assistant, but my entire network. I use Unify Gear and it's made, this, made it simple to set up and to maintain. I also subscribe to Nabu Casa. Now this is the primary method I use to casually access Home Assistant from the companion app or from the web browser as required. Don't forget, strong passwords, they're gonna be the key for all of these methods. So if you don't already use a password manager like 1Password, check out my link below for some discounts to get yourself started today. Guys, if you have any questions, make sure you put them down in the description. Anyone who'd be interested in a full tutorial on one of these methods or all of these methods, let me know. That's it for this one. I'm going to see you guys next time.